In 2004, Heather Reisman and Indigo began to focus on ways to support literacy across Canada, and the Indigo Love of Reading Foundation was born. Since then, it's donated $33 million to more than 3,000 schools across this country. Obviously, literacy is at the heart of something you care deeply about. Why? How did this come about? What was the kind of genesis well, of it? It came about in the most organic and wonderful way. I received a call from my alderman who said, uh, we have a school in the district that you live in that has no books in their life. Library, uh, could you send over a few boxes? And as I've said many times, it must have been a very quiet day at work. I said, well, rather than send the boxes, why don't I go over and visit the school? Well, I went. Uh, our, our riding is very interesting in Toronto. Mm -hmm. It has the wealthy part of Rosedale, but it also has a quite challenged part. So I went down to the school, went into the library, and I was stunned. There were no books. There were a couple of boxes of old books. Yeah. Anyway, the long and short was there was an amazing principal. I met the principal and we decided we were going to get together and enrich that library. And when we saw the impact that that had, we decided, OK, we're going to set up Indigo Love of Reading. We'll donate and we'll encourage our customers to donate. And we've been doing it now for 23 years. And the impact is phenomenal. But... The larger issue, the opportunity to address literacy in this country still exists, and I am deeply committed to it. You know, whether it is that commitment uh, or building this Canadian brand, this massive uh, kind of footprint for readers and, and, and authors, what do you see as the most important legacy you might leave? You're at a stage where, you know, you're thinking succession eventually. Yeah. What do you want to leave behind here? From a business point of view, yes. you mean? Yes. I do want the Indigo Enterprise to be not only as good as it was, but stronger. I think we have so much opportunity to advance what is our role in the mid 20, 21st century. Mm -hmm. And I care, I care hugely about the business itself, and I massively care about having a direct impact on literacy. You, you mentioned that you're able to look back at things like the decision not to run you know, the cartoon of Muhammad, uh, and rethink. You're somebody, yeah. I think, who is willing to kind of think about what you did wrong or you might do differently. Um, what what have you, that's a big question to put to you, but right. what have you learned? What would you say are things you kind of Lots. take away? Lots. <laughs> I learn every day. Obviously, I learned about this whole issue of succession and how it goes uh, is the most significant part. The, 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 the overt essence of the brand and honoring that. But honestly, I would say, and I'm happy to say, that I'm constantly learning and hopefully not making the same mistake twice, so the impact is strong. So you have a focus now to really put this business stronger in the hands of somebody who will then, yes. or somebody, yes. a group, yes. who will take it on. Right, and because, let me just take your literacy point and our business. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that there is a direct straight line between the level of literacy, the engagement in reading and books and ideas, and democracy. And we are living at a moment when, for many reasons, democracy is challenged. And that's what I care about. And, you know, we're talking about the business. Obviously, you created this business here in Canada. Does it feel particularly Canadian to you? Do you are you proud that it yes, is Canadian? Yes, yes. And I think Canadians have so much to be proud of in this particular industry. In the books we write and our culture and our creative, our poets, our mm -hmm. artists, our musicians, we punch above our weight. The world does need more Canada. And which is obviously a book that you uh, right. have been a part of. Uh, personal, uh, this is really a big question for yeah. 30 seconds. It's not the last time we're going to talk or hear right. from you. But what is the personal legacy you think is important rather than the business? A uh, family with the values that we hold dear mm -hmm. of, you know, contributing, of making your life meaningful, of giving back and of doing things in the world little by little that move it in the right direction. It's a pleasure to talk to you, Heather. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Love being here always. Heather Reisman is the founder and CEO of Indigo. Time for the takeaway and if made in Canada makes a difference. We live in a connected global marketplace and the ease with which we can buy or sell things near and far from home underscores how fluid our world has become. So does it matter if something is made in Canada or if the seller of that thing is owned by Canadians? 
If you want to buy a book or a shirt or a carton of milk, should real free traders care whether it comes from Saskatchewan or Sudan? The answer is maybe and sometimes. Sometimes it does matter. There's plenty of evidence over time showing that the location of a head office does shape the thinking of that business. From buying decisions to office culture, it makes a difference if Canada is represented. And when an owner is Canadian, it will almost by definition shape the perspective of a business. Having leaders who champion the national culture and domestic talent fosters a virtuous circle that makes that talent and culture stronger. This is not an argument for protecting our businesses from the forces of global competition, especially global competitors. That kind of pressure makes us better and smarter. But where we can support Canadian ownership, why not do it, since we all stand to gain? In Canada, that's often meant industries that are overly protected from some of those global forces, which doesn't always serve consumers well. But it's possible to support Canadian ownership and champion Canadian roots without creating an overly cozy environment. Our publishing and book retail industries are actually fine examples of how that can work. My takeaway? It's not a contradiction to believe in open markets and free trade while also backing homegrown teams. If anything, it's the recipe for success. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us.